going to go over a, a couple of things quick about a Taylor series. Um, you've probably encountered this before in your second semester calc class. Um, basically, what the Taylor series does is take any function, um, we use e to the x as an example, and what it does is that it writes it out as a series of polynomials um, that follow a very um, prescriptive formula. Um, I'm not going to get into the details of how you derive a Taylor series for all of the major, um, for all the important functions that we care the most about. Um, but basically it says that for um, about some particular point that we choose, we could make a list of, of polynomials that were, will better approximate a particular function. So for a function like e to the x, the first term is a, a 1, right? If, if you can approximate an e to the x as a 1, and at exactly 0, that's totally true. It works. If you go anywhere else, it doesn't work. It's not a very good uh, fit anymore. Uh, then you go to higher order terms. You get a linear term. And, and that's even better. It's almost like the tangent line at that particular point, right? So that's our second term for e to the x. And then as you go to higher order terms, uh, our next term is an x squared term. And that works uh, even for, for, that's a better fit. Uh, it's actually an x squared over 2 factorial, as it turns out. Uh, and the next term after that is a, um, is an r, something with an r cubed term. Basically, it helps us approximate formulas, and, and it doesn't help us approximate formulas. What it does is it gives us a list of polynomials that equals that particular uh, function. The nice part uh, about what we care, uh, that we care the most about a Taylor series expansion and the utility of it, as for when we have x is sufficiently small, we can drop off a lot of higher order terms. Um, for something like e to the x, we might choose to drop off um, any term x squared and higher. Uh, there's several other expansions that are particularly useful for your homework. Uh, something like sine of x, um, where x could be any variable like theta or something like that. Uh, the Taylor expansion is x minus x to the third over 3 factorial plus x to the fifth over 5 factorial plus other terms. And it turns out that most of the time, when we consider x or theta to be uh, small, when we, we want to approximate sine of x for small values of x, we only need to keep the first term. So sine of x becomes x. Um, similarly, when we have something like cosine of x, uh, cosine of x is written, the Taylor expansion for cosine of x is 1 minus x squared over 2 factorial plus x to the fourth, 4 factorial, plus uh, the remainder of the terms. And it is very often the case that for cosine of x, we might only keep the very first term again, which is 1. So instead of dealing with something that depends on the cosine of x, if we look at small values, if we consider a function um, for small values of x, we only need to worry about the very first term. Uh, one more, one other uh, function I'm going to give you is, is a kind of a, a general binomial expansion that we'll use quite a lot it looks like this. Um, I'll just make this x. 1 plus x to the n, where, where for small values of x, we can write this out as 1 plus n to the x plus n to the n minus 1 over 2 factorial x squared plus n times n minus 1 times n minus 2 over 3 factorial x cubed. So uh, that can be uh, very helpful for, for some of your homework items. Um, we can talk about this a little bit more on Tuesday, but I wanted to make sure that you can see this before attempting it. You'll need this for uh, problem number 2 and also problem number 3. Good luck. <laughs>